causing the war in North Africa. Hit those airfields. One where he bursts through the uh, the doorway, the doorway ger ger uh, German mess on a one of their airfields. I think was it in Italy or North Africa? North Africa. Yeah. Um, again, allegedly took everybody by surprise. They were all maybe having a drink or having some food, and and he gunned down all thir thirty or thirty three of them or something. Okay, but you know, let, 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 let's think about that, okay? Mm -hmm. You're a former Royal Marine, okay? So so you know um what it's like to be um you know on the front line. Now Paddy Main was leading a patrol, an SAS patrol deep behind the lines in North Africa. What was their mission? Their mission was to take out German and Italian air bases. That's air warplanes and those who operated those war planes. Why was it a crucial mission? Because we were losing the war in North Africa. We'd, we'd won it initially against the Italians, and then Hitler sent Rommel, one of his best generals, to North Africa with the Africa Corps, and they were beating us uh, left, right, and centre. We'd be being driven back to Cairo, into Egypt, and we might lose the Suez Canal, at which stage things were looking very dire, okay? So hit those airfields, take away the German-Italian air cover, and you might start to turn things around in the war in North Africa and also with the siege of Malta. So theirs was a vital mission. Now, let's look at the makeup of their patrol. What did they have? They had a few Jeeps, a few Jeep mounted machine guns, some Lewis bombs, which are these um, incendiary um, devices to blow up aircraft and a handful of men, probably mm -hmm. 12 men. David Sterling said you deploy in four man units. That's your ideal unit for behind line raids but then normally went with around about 12 so they're going into an airport in the dead of night hundreds sometimes over a thousand kilometers behind enemy lines when they've raided that airfield they've then got to get back again hunted all the way okay in that mess there are german pilots german pilots fly warplanes which are killing our troops and which are the target that they've been mm. sent out to destroy okay if he doesn't if he and his men didn't do what they did at that moment and said okay we'll leave those guys in the mess we'll just go and um sabotage the aircraft what were the chances that they would have been discovered and then you have 30 guys piling out of that mess with weapons to hunt them down so in the moment faced by the situation they faced why was that the wrong call War's not a nice thing. You know that. Mm -hmm. I know that. I've been on the front line of war as a reporter. You've been there as a, as, a, as, a, as a soldier. You know, but it's not a great... I'm carrying a camera, you're carrying a weapon. We've both had similar kind of experiences. You know war is not a pretty thing. And you're not there to do nice things. You're there to fight. Um, you know, and, and Paddy Main made a split-second decision. You speak to anyone, uh, and there are just a handful, two or three veterans left alive who served alongside Paddy Main and I had spoken to them. And you ask them why they would follow that man to the ends of the earth, actually to hell and back, because they'll all say that about him. OK, and they won't say that's because they, they he was the most likable individual. It would they won't say it's because they worshipped him. It's because they'll say he would get you out of there alive if, if he possibly could. And he always led from the front. And he had this uncanny, ghostly ability to assess threat and danger in an instant, in a split second, to decide whether the right thing to do was to attack or run away. That's what he had. So isn't it easy, 70, 75 years after the events, to um you know to throw stones and to cast aspersions i mean you know I, just by chance two weeks ago i was with paddy main's niece fiona okay mm -hmm. who's his nearest living relative you know this is a man who 
many believe should have been given the Victoria Cross at the end of the war. And, and, and he instead he won his first, his fourth DSO, Distinguished Service Order, um, which is in itself is, is, is an incredible achievement. One of the most decorated soldiers ever in the British Army. Um, you know, and people always ask, well, you know, was he was he bitter that he didn't get the Victoria Cross? And, you know, I was there with a filmmaker who wanted to meet, uh, you know, Fiona, um, Blair Main's niece. And he asked her that question and she said, he was never in it for the decorations or the medals. No. He's just... When I finished reading his book, Damien, I, I was... I was left, like, gr grieving a bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. You know, God, I'm getting a bit upset now just thinking about it. I mean... He... What whatever he was a character, you know. He's a, and not everybody is. In fact, there's not enough. There's not enough of them. And this is the thing. I uh, um. It is war, and, and war is horrible. And there are sort of. I don't want to say pretenses. There are certain um, conventions in play. Let's say, but if any civilian thinks that that, that that that's a rigid set of etiquette that everybody abides by then they're i'm gonna say they're probably a bit 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 naive like you say this was a mess full of fighter aces german fighter aces who were right. dedicated at all cost to that's getting right. kills mm -hmm. they they didn't see it as killing the enemy they saw it as, as, as getting kills getting the marks on the side of their plane so when they went back to the, you know, back to Berlin <laughs> or wherever, they could, you know, raise a glass of champagne, and that that that's a fighter race over there. I mean, they saw I mean, it as... not, not only that, Chris, but you've got to bear in mind when they when they carried out these raids. Okay, the Germans didn't really have an equivalent unit to the SAS or the Long Range Desert Group, which were the the, the more intelligence gathering unit in North African deserts. They had small small kind of ad hoc units but nothing really to compare so when they carried out these raids what was it that hunted them through the desert it was the Luftwaffe obviously it was air aircraft and mm -hmm. pilots so the more aircraft you could take out and let's be honest about it the more pilots you could kill the less chance that you'd actually be hunted for a thousand miles back across the desert as you tried to retreat and get back to your base yeah and it's not just that, is it? it? It's an incredibly brave thing to do, to kick a door down with only a submarine, a, a, a British sub, an English sub, submachine gun at best, which for anyone wondering what I'm on about, they're prone to stoppages. Um, to, yeah, I mean, most people would be like, right, I'll give that door a miss and can we just get, you know, let, let, let's just try and get out. And But no, it was it constantly saw, saw it um, through to the end and war isn't nice. And I think some of the stories I've heard from the Falklands would probably really make people... Um, yeah, it would uh, it, it 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 would spin their minds. I think if they knew some of the truths of what went on down there, you know, young men full of anger, bitterness, testosterone, had to watch their their friends massacred. And we're, I'm obviously talking about both sides here now. You fight your way up a hill. You got you know a grenade and you got to chuck it in a trench. You know, a trench of the enemy that have just just killed your best friends, and then if they shoot you all the way up the mountain, and and once they get overrun, they they suddenly go like this, when they could have done that eight hours ago or twelve hours ago, and and no one would have had to get hurt. You, you, you know, it, it's um, it's not even like a decision, is it? It's you you you're in that you're in that you're in that killer's up killer zone and uh i think um yeah it's it's slightly naive to try to put these um fixed rules on things isn't it yeah i mean you know especially in world war Two, you know some of these guys 
by the end of the war, they had been doing behind the lines operations 1940, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, for five or six years. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they were doing more than one a week, back to back, with no leave, no going back home, no, no seeing your loved ones. And at the same time, seeing your best friends, because you'll know as well as I do, Chris, mm -hmm. when you're in combat situations, you generally tend to make the most incredibly close relationships with those you know, who are close with you for obvious reasons. You're all about to die or not die, as the case might be. So you've been five years at war doing behind the lines operations, seeing your closest friends get killed, get captured. You know when they're captured, they're getting tortured by the Gestapo and being murdered because we realised that after a while, that's what was happening. And yet you're supposed mm -hmm. to fight by Queensbury rules. What are the chances? Imagine the trauma. Imagine the drip, 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 drip effect of the trauma over all those years. Imagine what that does to your mind. There's a story about Maine later in the war, you know, kind of end of 44, early 45. And they're, they're advancing into Germany, the SAS, at the vanguard, as always. And they capture a young SS man in pristine uniform who has just been responsible for, for some unspeakable atrocities against civilians, as, as they often were, OK? And there's a man on his patrol who had been captured earlier in the war, held by the Gestapo and the SS, tortured, sent, sentenced to murder, taken to Woodland to be shot and escaped. And he says to Maine, let me deal with him. And there's a quote, you know, from, from, from what Maine said at the time. And he said, I used to think war was a chivalrous thing, but, you know, the age of, of knights in armour has long gone. Take him away. 